Today I am going to tie together some of the topics that we have covered recently. If you have not watched my videos on asset location or asset allocation, you may want to check those out before watching this. In brief, asset allocation is deciding which asset classes should make up your portfolio, and asset location is deciding which accounts those asset classes should be owned in. I often advocate maintaining the same asset allocation in all account types. If you choose, for example, to hold all of your bonds in your RRSP account, you're introducing an often overlooked side effect. I'm Ben Felix, Associate Portfolio Manager at PWL Capital. In this episode of Common Sense Investing, I'm going to tell you how your asset location might be throwing off your asset allocation. If you own assets in your RRSP, you have to remember that you only own part of them. The government is entitled to some percentage of everything in that account depending on your circumstances when you make RRSP withdrawals. Believe it or not, this plays a role in your asset allocation. Let's take a look at an example to wrap our heads around what I'm talking about. To keep things simple, let's assume that you have $50,000 in an RRSP and $50,000 in a TFSA. If you have a 30% tax rate at withdrawal, your RRSP account is worth $35,000 after tax. If you hold all of your bonds in your RRSP and all of your stocks in your TFSA, your pre-tax asset allocation is 50% stocks and 50% bonds, but your after-tax asset allocation is about 59% stocks and 41% bonds. Let's assume stocks return 5% and bonds return 3% and look one year out. The $50,000 in your RRSP would be worth $51,500 pre-tax, and your TFSA would be worth $52,500. After accounting for the 30% tax liability in the RRSP, your take-home is $88,500. If you hold the same asset mix in both accounts, then your pre-tax and after-tax asset allocations are the same. You are paying equal amounts of each asset class to the government, as opposed to only paying the government from your bond allocation as in the previous example. If after-tax asset allocation is the only thing that matters, then we would expect a 59% stock and 41% bond mix split equally across the RSP and TFSA to give us the same after-tax result as our first example. In this case, we will have $29,411 in stocks and $20,588 in bonds pre-tax in both the RSP and the TFSA. Assuming the same 5% return for stocks and 3% for bonds, after one year, the RRSP and TFSA are each worth $52,088 pre-tax. Paying 30% of the RRSP to the government leaves us with a total after-tax amount of $88,500, which is identical to our previous scenario. Despite having a different pre-tax asset allocation, which is what you see in your account, in the two examples so far, we have demonstrated that it is the after-tax allocation that determines the end result for after-tax dollars in your pocket. Now let's look at another example where we take our intended 50% stock and 50% bond allocation, but hold it in equal proportions in both accounts. We will have $25,000 each in stocks and bonds in both the RRSP and TFSA account. Note that our pre-tax allocation of 50% stocks and 50% bonds is the same in this example as it was in our first example, where we had $50,000 in bonds in the RRSP and $50,000 in stocks in the TFSA. The big difference, and the point of the example, is that the after-tax allocations are different. Remember that the after-tax allocation of our first example ended up being about 59% stocks and 41% bonds when the tax bill on the RRSP was taken into account. In this example, with an equal split of stocks and bonds in both the RRSP and TFSA, our overall allocation stays the same before and after tax. That means a 50% stock and 50% bond after tax allocation. Running this through with our expected return assumptions, we will see the impact on the after tax dollars in your pocket. In this case, we end up with $88,400, notably less than our previous two examples which had higher after tax allocations to higher returning stocks. There is one more scenario that we can run to drive this home further. If we start with $50,000 of bonds in the RRSP, $7,500 in bonds in the TFSA, and $42,500 of stocks in the TFSA, we have a pre-tax asset allocation of 42.5% stocks 
and 57.5% bonds, which turns into a 50% stock and 50% bond allocation after tax. Running this ahead one year, we end up with an after-tax value of $88,400, exactly the same figure as our previous example. I know this can be a bit of a challenge to wrap your brain around. The main takeaway is that what really matters to you is your after-tax asset allocation. Based on this, it would be sensible to estimate your after-tax allocation and ensure that it matches your risk profile. In practice, I think that a lot of people look only at their pre-tax asset allocation. If you have tried to optimize your asset location by holding most of your bonds in your RRSP account, you would have an asset allocation that may be more aggressive than you had intended. Now, maybe this is not such a bad thing, as it leads to higher expected returns due to a more aggressive than intended asset allocation. Taking into account after-tax asset allocation does add further complexity to the portfolio management process, which I believe adds to the challenge of optimizing asset location for any investor. All of these issues go away when you hold the same asset mix in all accounts. Does your after-tax asset allocation match your risk profile? Tell me about it in the comments. Thanks for watching. My name is Ben Felix of PWL Capital, and this is Common Sense Investing. I will be talking about a new common sense investing topic every two weeks, so subscribe, click the bell for updates.